So, welcome to the Better Minecraft um, custom mod pack tutorial on how to do it, right? You might have been like, hey, I want to join the mod pack, so let me click on this form, right? And then it's like, ha, make sure you watch the video. Well, you're in the right place. This is that video, okay? First thing you want to do is get multi-MC, okay? We're going to go like, multi-MC. Whoa. First thing, multi-MC.org, right? If you, if you already have a multi-MC, you can probably skip later in the video and find where. But for you guys who don't, I highly recommend it. It's great. Plus, you're going to need it if you want to get a custom mod pack like we do. So, you're going to do the big old Dunlop. Bum bum. MMC, stable, blah 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 blah. Who, who really cares what it's called, right? But this is the file, okay? You're going to extract it. Boom. You got the extracted file, right? You can really put this wherever you want, but you're going to run the .exe, right? Boom. American English. Boom, boom, boom. Um, which Java version you have, I would choose just 1.8 for right now. That's the version. Because it really doesn't matter unless you play 1.17, but that's for another video, so don't worry about it. Okay, boom. You got your multi-MC stuff, right? I already have this. So you have this menu, and you're like, hey, what do you do with this file? Go ahead and just chuck it on your desktop somewhere, you know? Um, this is what I do, you know? Just chuck it on your desktop. That's my multi-MC instance. I can't move it because there's already a folder there, but that's what I normally do, right? And then I go in here, right? You have your file, multi-MC. You can create a shortcut. Have this just randomly on your desktop, and have the shortcut right here. Boom, you have multi-MC. But now you want to get the actual mod pack, obviously, right? Okay, then you're going to want to come into our PandaCraft network. There's probably a link, if you're in this server, there's a link to it to come to here, you know? And if you did just freshly join this and want to join, that's cool. That's actually really cool. Okay, so you're going to want to go to downloads, go to this Google Drive, right? Boom. In the top right, there's a download button. You're going to click download. It's just a zip file, so, you know, it's downloading. I already have it, so I'm going to cancel it. But once that goes to your download, you're going to want to click add an instance, then go to import from zip, browse, go up, click on downloads, boom, better Minecraft. That's what you're going to want. You're going to click open, right? Then it's just like better Minecraft. I'm going to name it something else. I already have one, right? We can name it test. Boom. Okay. It's going to take a little bit. So we'll just let it extract the mod pack. Okay. Once you install the mod pack, and it's there saying the test. You can name it whatever you want, obviously. You're gonna want to go to settings, Java. There's max memory allocation. Okay. Basically, I know some of you guys got them doo doo PCs. Okay. I'm gonna have something on the screen that shows how much your maximum amount of RAM and how much you can allocate. Because basically, you can crash your OS or crash your computer if you allocate too much than you have. For example, I have 32 gigabytes, so I could like allocate like 20 gigabytes if I really want to. I'm never going to do that because there's literally no point. It's going to probably make it run slower if you allocate too much. But for example, if you only had 8 gigabytes and you allocated like 6 gigabytes, you would probably crash your computer, which is super bad, right? So I'm going to show this little sheet on the um, on screen, obviously, so you guys can see how much you should allocate depending on your maximum amount of RAM. If you have no idea how much RAM you have, you could op open up Task Manager, boom, boom. Where's performance? Boom. Right here, 32 gigabytes. Yours will say 16, however much, right? However much you have, maybe 8, maybe 12, a bunch of different values. So with this value, with the thing on screen, that's going to tell you how much you should allocate. Don't mess with this number. Only change this number. You're going to bring this up or down depending on the number I show. So yeah, pretty simple. Um, don't do too much. It might crash, but you can always mess with it. But if you don't understand, follow what I have on screen, okay? Then you're going to want to launch. Um, I don't recommend having a lot of things open. Right now, I have OBS open and basically nothing else important, you know? I wouldn't be watching a bunch of YouTube videos or, like, any other thing because it's modded Minecraft. It takes a lot, you know? It takes a lot of your resources, including CPU and memory. So, try not to waste your resources on things that you're not using. If you're... So, just... I would close everything, you know? It's like, bye-bye. Not OBS, obviously. But you can just close everything once you start launching. Because, you know, you want it to run the best you can. So, I guess just time lapse, wait, waiting for this thing to go. Okay, this is the point that most people have a problem with. Basically, you get to the very end, test freezing data, and you're stuck, you know? Might say crashing, but that's literally with every single mod pack, no matter on what end PC you have. Just give it a second, don't click away, and it comes right up. There we go. Okay. 
So, you got YouTube. You can ignore this. It's just to make a number higher. So, you can click that if you want to make a number higher. This is all of the mods we had. Have if you want to check them out. But later in the video, we will do, or Alex is going to let show you what um what mods can do what and really what the mod back is. So, you know how to play it, you know? So, you can skip to the end if you want to see that. So, there are a couple things. Discord, obviously. You can join the Discord server if you want, you know? But, a lot of people have doo-doo PCs, you know? I'm going to change my settings to how I like them, but I, I increase this stuff all the way, right? But you're going to want to make it optimized, you know? Don't miss minpap levels if you have a bad PC. It's not worth it, you know? You could change things around a little bit, but I would keep it towards this unless you know that you have a good PC and can handle it, you know? Things that you can do to make it better, obviously, lower the uh, render distance, lower the max frame rate. I would turn on vSync for yourself. Particles decrease. There's just a bunch of things. Turn off clouds. Entity shadows off. There's just a lot of things that you can do to make it just be better. Obviously, to run better. But they're pretty basic, so you should be able to understand them. Yeah, you can mess with this. I normally have them. I think the default's just 50. I normally like them a little higher, so you can like get them effects. You know? Okay, I just want to remind you guys. Um, don't just do the normal bed or Minecraft thing because we added some custom mods. Like, great. You won't be able to join the server unless you do what I'm telling you. You know? So multiplayer, this should already be here for you. If it's not, that's the IP. Should just be able to use it and join. It's whitelisted, obviously. I'm whitelisted, so I can go ahead and join. By the way, this tutorial is completely like improv. There's no script. I'm just talking to see how it works, you know? So I feel like the slap shot guy, you know? I'm just talking really fast, maybe mess some words up, but that's okay, you know? Doing this one take, see how it goes. Okay. So yeah. Um next thing, we got a quest book. Loose quest book. Just tells you a little bit of basics. You might not know what to do. But that's okay, explore, it's a sandbox. You might see googly eyes on everything, it's pretty fun. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the flans mod. So you use the gold, golden hoe, it's our land claim, because obviously land claiming is very important, very important. Because if you don't have land claiming, then people can reap your base. You know, obviously we do trust people, but since people might be exploring, I won't be able to track everything, it's like a he said, she said type of thing, you know? It's not worth it. So what you can do is not drop the golden hoe, Let's say I have this chest. Now I'm like, hey, I wanna I don't want any little person touching my chest. You know, boom. You can just go like right click, run over, and right click. I'll, there's a more in-depth um, tutorial in the description. It has to be a big enough area, okay? See the particle, then you go away. There's another particle. If you're holding it, you can see the entire area. I'll do a more in, there's a more in-depth tutorial in the description of someone who explains it better, but that's pretty simple. It claims 10 blocks under. So I can break it obviously because I own. But let's not there. But let's say like about here, someone could be breaking around here, you know? And you won't be able to stop because it only goes 10 blocks deep unless you edit it. So if you do want to claim the area under, you have to like bring this down more, okay? It does go all, all the way up though. Like no if you start building upward, no one will be able to destroy your buildings all the way up. Or, like air, you know? So that's a very nice feature. So you won't need to worry about someone blocking you in or anything. Um, briefing system is not foolproof, so if anything happens, let me know. There are a couple commands that you can do too. You can read through them, right? I don't want any more stuff. Delete all. Type it again. Delete all. You can just remove all of the claims, you know? Another thing. Add claim. You can do specific coordinates, which I think is very useful. You go to a corner, type the corner, go to the other coordinate. Boom. You start with 600, I think, or like 700 claim blocks, right? But every 30 seconds you gain a claim box so just the more you play the more blocks that you can claim you know so you should always have enough to for your base if you aren't sure if it's someone's claim you can simply grab a stick boom 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 i had a claim over here right still no i deleted them all that's okay boom boom a little testing claim you got a stick you right click the stick this is district banners claim nobody owns this block this is district banners claim you know it's pretty nice Another thing with Flan, um, you can um, actually trade claims. It's very cool. You can do, let's see, transfer claim. You can give, I want to give a claim to just do You need to be inside the claim, obviously. But, so let, let's say you built a really cool house, right? You could sell the house to someone if you want to. They drop you the diamonds and you, and you transfer the claim, you know? It's all, like, very cool. Okay, um, some more optimization type things once you're in. You can see your frame rate. I'm at 50, 46, 55. I normally go up to 100, but that's because obviously I'm running OBS, so it is a little lower. But I do run the server. I do run on the server just fine, no stuttering or anything, you know. So things that you can do better, you can just decrease it. Obviously, I normally like to go to fancy. That's how you get the leaves to look nice. But really, anything else, there's no reason. There's really no reason to change it. 
um you might see your render distance just change a lot randomly that's because the server depending on the tps of the server and how well the server is running it will lower and increase the max amount of chunks so this number doesn't make any a whole lot you could leave it to 20 but that would just be like the maximum that you could use but at the moment the server might only be at like 8 15 13 you know it might be randomly but if you're on by yourself it should be at 20 so that'd be nice um another thing is resource packs resource packs can be a little dangerous because obviously it's modded a lot of things rely on a lot of things so i wouldn't mess with these too much if you want bushy leaves you can add this you can only add the ones that are here i'm gonna use this one and probably fresh animations but that can cause a lot more lag so i, I would only mess with the um resource packs that are listed here and keep them try to keep them in the same order if you add bad leaves just remember to remove you know no bushy leaves or like if you don't want a certain thing you can there's just a bunch of things that you're able to do it's modded there's a lot of new things Try not to mess with the controls too much. You can change minor things, but I would definitely sort by show conflicts and see if you can. If something ever turns um, yellow like this, it means it's already been used, right? And it's not very wise to change them because it can be conflicting and some things might just not work. So be careful with that. Obviously, you can change what you want, but, you know, be careful. We also have Discord integration, which I think is just pretty awesome. I'm able to say hi, hi, right? And then if you look in the Discord, Boom, so there's a pie in chat, right? And then I can say, hello, with half of them capped. You look in chat, boom. Discord, District Panda, click to mention. Um, hello, District Panda. You wanna to talk to them more? Boom, you mentioned them. It's all very cool. But you can't just do add District Panda because obvious reasons, we don't want people spam. You gotta use that code, that one-time code, you know? Um, if you don't want to be seeing people message, you can do slash the Discord link. I already did it, but it is going to give you a link. Just like the one here. It's going to be slash link, um, blah, 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 blah. It's going to say in that chat, you can copy it to clipboard, just copy in here. Your account has now been linked with District Panda, since obviously I'm logging in as District Panda. This link no longer works, obviously, because I already used it. So, you know, don't try to link my account. It will probably just tell you no. <laughs> oh yeah i tried it and it says invalid but you you can do slash uh, settings uh, settings <laughs> of course full credit to the people who actually made bed or minecraft because you know this wouldn't be a thing without them you know we just simply took their mod pack put in some more multiplayer friendly mods and some more things that we thought would be fun obviously the chats well alex will show you about that later okay you'll see all the mod showcases with alex right but there's a bunch more things that really just make it more accessible and more fun you know i think more fun like three and it works really well with it which i, I think is really cool if you have any other questions um just ask me or alex if you ask alex you'll probably just turn around and ask me so you know just ask me you know and i could just really give you any information you need about really anything you need help installing if you need help you know setting it up if you don't know what to do like if you're like oh how, how do you do this this or this you know just ask you know so make sure to read the rules there's a lot or not a lot but kind of important rules you know um try not to travel too far afk that's like skimming it on the google form there will be rules so just read them they're better for everyone they're not just to help the server they're to help you guys you know obviously you don't want someone claiming your base you know so basically just warning people um obviously we don't score griefing anything weird like that it's like a no no but, um, without further ado, you can, um, go hang out with Alex, um, and he'll explain all the mods. Hello everyone, we're excited to have you playing with us on the PandaCraft server. I'm here to show you some of the great things you may experience in your time playing in the server, and to show you what changes this mod pack has to offer. To start off, this mod pack doesn't change the way you play a regular Minecraft playthrough. No complicated progression systems like in other mod packs, just have fun and playing this mod pack like you would regular Minecraft. Okay, into the nitty gritty. This mod pack focuses on improving five core themes of Minecraft. These themes are world generation, exploration, building, mobs, and endgame. Let's get started on the world generation. The main mod here is Oh the Biomes You'll Go, adding over a dozen new well-made biomes with new wood and building blocks. All of these biomes are perfect places for making a cool base. You'll also be able to explore massive caves with the Caves and Cliffs mod, emulating the caves and blocks that would be found in the 1.17-1.18 update. 
this even features a new deep dark dimension under bedrock. This dimension features new blocks to mine and to use in your builds, as well as plentiful underground caves. But, uh, beware of the warden. In the nether, we also have biomes you'll go, adding much more interesting biomes such as the quartz desert, the wailing garth, the brimstone caverns, and the weeping mire. And, in the end, you have three main mods. Better End, Energetic Expansion, and Outer End. All of these mods combine to create beautiful scenery and interesting challenges for the player that all add to your Minecraft experience. A smaller mod that helps complement the world is Ambient Sounds 3, adding immersive ambiance to whatever biome you are in. Let's give this a listen. Alright, time for the next category, Exploration. Dungeons plus Repurposed Structures and Towers of the Wild are your three main exploration mods. These three mods complete the land with interesting structures and dungeons for you to tackle on. Inside each dungeon, you'll find rewarding loot and fun enemies to fight. Other smaller mods like Nature's Compass also allow you to travel to any biome so that you can find whatever you need. Antique Atlas gives you a vanilla-friendly mini-map that also maps certain structures. There are also a couple of different mods that add the dimensions, such as the Twilight Forest. Make a 3x3 three three pool filled with water, put flowers all around the edge, throw a diamond in, and see what happens. This dimension is absolutely incredible. It has so many new ores, blocks, biomes, enemies, and bosses. It even has a proper progression system. Some of these bosses include the Naga, the Lich, and the Hydra. I don't want to spoil too much though, but have fun with this incredible mod. Now, let's see how you can use some of these mods to help you with building. Of course, all of the biomes we've listed all add new wood and stone types for you to build with. You also have variant X16 and masonry, which adds many two new variants to the original Minecraft blocks. <laughs> uh, Destuke, there's a, there's a mod called ma masonry, get it? You also have supplementaries, which adds new amazing cosmetic blocks, such as signposts, globes, clocks, and more. And let's not forget Quark's vertical slabs. I mean, it looks it looks cursed, but it's good for building. There's even a mod that allows you to place a block under the one you're standing on. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I'm pretty sure it's witchcraft, but it's it's really useful. Other smaller mods, such as Paintings++, plus plus, adds many new fun paintings to decorate your base with. There's an elevator mod for a block that acts like an elevator. There's also a woodcutter that, that does literally what it just does what a stonecutter does, but, but for wood. With all that said, let's go on to the next main feature, mobs. The main mod here is Alex's Mobs, adding 31 amazing, well-made mobs, all with their own different behaviors. Interacting with these mobs is honestly really fun. Each mob is super unique, such as the gorilla. They spawn in packs, and if you mess with one, they all come after you, beating their chest and knocking you out of one of them. Crocodiles are nasty, hostile mobs that can come out of the water, hold you in their mouth, and drag you into the water just for them to eat you. Just uh, make sure to keep these away from your pets, or else you may have some uh, unwanted consequences, to say the least. There's also a cockroach that I, honest, I honestly don't know what it does, but just give it a maraca, they'll appreciate it. You also have exotic birds, which adds 30 plus birds for you to interact with, document, and collect. It's also fairly accurate to real life, so if in like two years someone asks you a question about what food a barn owl eats, just remember what you fed it, the barn owl in this mod pack, and you're good to go. There's also plenty more, and I haven't even scratched the surface. Before we head into the last section, the end game, I'm going to rapid fire list some mods that don't fit into a specific category, but still provide many cool vanilla plus features. There's Colytra, that allows you to combine an elytra and a chest plate so that you can fly with full armor still on you. There's torch slabs, which lets you put torches on slabs. That's the mod, that's all it does. This is the best mod ever. Better third person overhauls the way third person mode works. Bountiful gives you quests to complete in villages for extra rewards. There's a mod that allows you to sit if you press Z. It's it's a pretty cool, I guess. 
carry on allows you to carry chests and, and cows why why is this a thing you can also now instantly mine a tree by holding shift enhanced celestial provides you new events during the night the blood moon increases mob spawn during the night and the harvest moon increases crop yield Aquaculture 2 overhauls fishing, making it much more rewarding. Buzz your bees provides a lot more things to do with your bees. The bottle your XP mod lets you put your experience into bottles. Just, just don't do it too much. Upgrade Aquatic adds a ton of new features to the oceans, making them even more interesting and fun. There's also JEI, the literal best mod in existence. It shows you crafting recipes and much, much more. It even works with Create's Ponder feature, and we will talk about Create later. Now, on to the end game. Minecraft has lacked a proper end game for a while, but this mod pack adds a whole lot of content to the end game. There is one main mod here that is your end game content, and that is the Abyss Chapter 2. This incredible mod is so huge, I can't even cover the surface of it. This mod adds 14 new armor sets. Some even go far beyond netherite as well. With extraordinary fauna and flora for you to interact with, it adds new items such as the mutated ender pearl, which allows you to throw an ender pearl far beyond what you can in vanilla. There are quests and even a very interesting story in this dimension. There are interesting travelers in this dark dimension explaining the world around you and giving you quests to complete. These travelers may or may not help you in certain fights in this dimension, so help them if you find them. Now, what side will you choose, light or dark? You have to answer this question as you determine the fate of this ancient dimension. There is upgraded netherite, providing a plethora of new netherite upgrades that you can use to your advantage. It also provides new shields, its apples, and even armor for your horse friends. Now, onto some of the mods we added. First of all, the Create mod. This mod is huge. This tech mod explores Minecraft. It, it was a little more mechanical. There are mechanical arms, conveyor belts, crazy long pistons, crushing wheels, and more. With this mod, you can pretty much create any farm you want. I mean, you can even create a giant train. This mod may look complicated at first, but I'll try to explain it in a simple and brief way. There are four main ways of getting power in this mod. Encased fans provide the least amount of power and speed, but are super easy to set up. Water wheels provide the second least amount of power, but are also pretty easy to make and set up. Next, there's the windmill, a very powerful power source, capable of providing thousands of stress units of power if set up correctly. Finally, there's the furnace engine. This is the most expensive to make, but also provides the most power. However, this always needs something smelting for it to work. Fortunately, people have even created tree farm designs utilizing Create that always make sure something is smelting in the engine. Now, what will you do with all this energy? Pretty much anything you want. You can make cool doors, cool factories, and you can even use them to move liquids through pipes. Pro tip, use items such as cogwheels to limit or provide certain blocks with more power, just like in real life, but, but without the blocky part. If you are confused about any block in the mod, using JEI you can hold W on pretty much any create block in order to learn about it. This is a brief rundown of the mod, but I highly recommend watching separate tutorials on this mod. But fear not, once you understand this mod, the only limit is your imagination. We also have added some smaller social mods such as the hat mod. Collect rare hats from mobs and trade them with your friends. Th this, this sounds like a mobile game ad, but it's not, it's not. You could also collect a hilarious hat gun, which allows you to shoot your friends with a hat, making them wear that hat. And you might have noticed that 20% of the mobs have googly eyes. And that's all because of this mod. I mean, I mean they look hilarious. There's also a moat craft, which allows you to press B to do many fun emotes. You can even create your own emotes through Blender. You would then import these emotes by going into the MultiMC app, clicking on this instance, pressing Minecraft folder, going to a folder called emotes, and then just dragging and dropping the file there. I'm not experienced in making things in Blender, but uh, I know someone who kinda is. Uh, Lemon, give me them good emotes. 
This concludes the brief showcase on the custom mod pack. Hopefully you can join us in the server. We're excited to play with you. If you have any questions on how to install it, message Distuke Panda or Amzing Alex in the Discord server. We'll be happy to help you. Anyways, that ends this video and thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Distuke Panda because that is who I am. That this is me, I am Distuke Panda. And make sure to subscribe to Amzing Alex.